And welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Chikimak II, and I am the Digital Painter. This week, we are going to continue with our Procreate update. For those of you that have watched my old Procreate videos, you know that Procreate has changed quite a bit. And so we're going to continue moving through our Procreate. We're actually getting into the program this week. We're going to look at some things. We're going to start to understand it a little better. We looked at the gallery, the last video. So um, so let's, let's go ahead and jump right in. Oh, before I say that, make sure that if you're a new YouTube watcher, hit the subscribe button. Love you subscribers. If you are interested in more of these types of videos, you can check the YouTube channel. You can also check the digitalpainter.com. Both are great places, a lot of information. All right, now let's jump right in because it's a little warm here and I don't want to uh, be sweating by the end of this video. Don't have air conditioning. All right, so we are out of the gallery. Actually, let's jump back to the gallery. This is just some sketching that I've been doing today. And let's go ahead and start a new document. We're going to start a 4K. That's what you saw there just a second ago. And it opens up. And here we are in the crux of, uh, of Procreate. Okay, This is where you're generally going to live when you are using this program. A couple of things. You notice that a bunch of menu tools up top. You see a couple sliders on the left, a couple of buttons on the left. All of these we're going to get to over the next couple of videos that deal with this. Now, I'm using an old stylus because I still haven't gotten a new stylus yet. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm using the Hex 3 Jaja, which no longer actually connects to Procreate, apparently, and um, so it's not pressure sensitive, which is fine because I've kind of moved away from pressure sensitive myself. I like to be able to use the sliders when I'm in Procreate. So, uh, so just letting you know, that's what I'm using as a stylus. First thing we see at the top, we see gallery on the left. If we hit that button, that's going to take us back to the gallery. I'm not going to do that because we've already done that once this video. Uh, fairly simple. The four tool, the other four menu items on the left are kind of menu items that allow you to do things to your image um, that don't include the actual drawing of the image. On the right hand side, you see the five tool items, all of those, uh, except for the layers, I guess, kind of, sort of, but all of those are directly related to your physical drawing. We're going to start with the ones on the left, just to kind of go through them so we understand, and then next week I'll do the ones on the right, uh, because we're really going to get into playing with some of the brush ones, etc. So the first one is this little wrench, and if you hit the little wrench button, you'll see lots of different actions, as it says. The first set is you have insert. Of course, you can import an image, or you can take a photo. So if we, like, Click take a photo right here, brings up photo. Uh, let's turn it so it's the front facing cam. Oh, we gotta allow it. Turn it so it's the front facing camera. It's shooting straight up. I look straight down. Hello there. Then we hit the picture button. Oh, that is scary. And then you can use the photo. Boom. Now the photo is within Procreate. So for anybody that does collage type stuff, Procreate has an easy way of adding photos if they're in your photo album. So if we click this and we import an image, you can pull any from your photos. You can import from. So if you've got them in places like your different iCloud Drive locations, or, oops, or you can import them from your photos or from iTunes, okay? So a couple of different places that you can import. You can also paste from clipboard. So if you copy it from another program, you can actually paste in here. So uh, I'm going to move me over here. I'm kind of scary looking. There we go. So that's what insert does, inserts an image. Your canvas. So a couple of things here. I don't have early access for the perspective guide. I think it's like $0.99. Cents, $1.99. Uh, so I haven't started using them yet. Uh, we'll get into that. I'm probably going to purchase that over the next week or so so that I can start playing with it. You've got flip canvas horizontally and flip it vertically. This is great when you're drawing, when you're creating, especially when you're doing uh, humanoid figures. Being able to flip your image uh, left to right allows you to see where things don't look quite right. When you've been looking at the image the same way for, let's say, half an hour, 30 minutes, you've been working on the same head and you've been looking at you're sometimes you start to gloss over in your head the things that aren't working so the ability to flip the canvas horizontally and vertically allows you to flip it and then see what's not working correctly next you have you have copy canvas to clipboard so anything that we have in here we could copy it to clipboard i'm not going to do that not important instant replay 
So if you click it, nothing happens because I haven't done much. <laughs> so we will we'll get into that later. Um, video is enabled, and of course you've got your Canvas metadata, some information like your dimensions, uh, your data size, which might be important if you're you know if you're doing an image that is pretty in depth, the data size can get pretty big. And if you have one of the smaller iPads in regards to how much it can contain, uh, it may be something that you want to watch. Your recorded video side because it does record each of your strokes. I apologize, it is warm here, so I needed to. And then so far it's tracked three minutes. Uh, video quality uh, preset is normal. All right, so that's under the canvas. You go into share, share your artwork or export video. Again, exporting the video is an export of what you've been doing, sharing your artwork. If you click it, you can share it as a pro, PSD, JPEG, PNG. So if, for example, hit JPEG, exporting. And you can export it in all of these different locations. Okay, we're not going to though. You have devices. This is where if you have a pressure sensitive stylus, you see a Donut Jot, Pencil by 53, Pogo Connect, and Wacom Intuos stylus. I'm actually not going to be purchasing any of those uh, anytime soon, so I'm probably not going to be worrying about the pressure sensitivity. I find the pressure sensitivity sometimes works really well, sometimes just gets really aggravating when it doesn't do what you want it to do. It's not like, uh, it's it, it doesn't work quite as... Uh, as good as some of the regular tablets for your regular desktops. They're nice, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't do it. If it's something that, you know, if iPad is what you're working on, consistently get that, get a pressure stylus, use it, it could be very good for you. Just for me right now, because I'm doing a lot more desktop work while using the iPad, more of kind of a sketching thing, you know, sitting outside, just kind of sketching rather than doing full art pieces. Uh, I don't really need the pressure sensitivity. Um, and actually, what I can show you, I do have an old Adonit Jot that doesn't work, but I can show you if you try and connect it, so I'll go ahead and connect mine, you'll see mine says off right now, and it just connected, okay? So you can see it's, you can adjust the buttons, the writing style gives you that information. Uh, the big thing for me is I can't adjust the pressure sensitivity, like on my Wacom where I can I can do a kind of a curve on you know how how hard am I pressing equals how much pressure I actually want uh, and there we go we turned it off put that back over there good then we have our preferences now you've got light in interface which I hate so I'm gonna go back to the dark interface you can fit canvas inside interface which uh, six of one half dozen of another for me. Oops, let's go back to that. Uh, canvas orientation memory. This is actually, I leave this on because, so if you're looking at this, if I do this, if I do this, see how it remembered to go back to that up and down? Boom. 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 Okay, so it it pulls itself back. Canvas orientation memory is nice. Uh, I keep it on. Brush cursor. I don't actually use the brush cursor. Uh, as you can see right now, you can't see a cursor, but I can write. Uh, if you turn the brush cursor on, I don't know. I've actually never used it. And I don't... Yeah, I don't see anything. Nothing... Oh, I'm using a fairly small thing, though. Let's go to painting. Yeah. Okay, so it's not something I'm going to use. I don't see it doing much. Uh, right-handed interface. Uh, that means the bar's on the right. If you click it, it switches to the left. And I'm going to put it back over there because I have like having... I mean, switches them to the right. I like having them on the left. You have the classic color picker. I don't advise turning that on. The new auto picker is so much better. Um, you've got auto, I uh, see I've got auto hide interface disabled. If you turn it on, your interface will disappear after a certain amount of time. See how it all disappeared? Which is actually kind of nice. So if we hit that button, it'll come back. Uh, I tend to just leave mine on though because I'm using those buttons, especially the brush and the smudge and the eraser tool. I use those fairly often, so it stays on for me. Eyedropper delay, what that means is how long do you have to hold it down for the eyedropper to appear and pick a color? 
uh, quick line delay, uh, which allows you to do straight lines. We'll get into that a little later. Selection mass vis visibility. Um, oh, there is an edit pressure curve. Well, there we go. There is an edit pressure curve. This is new to me. So apparently, we can adjust the pressure curve. So I'm going to have to actually go back and play with that now because I, I, did, I had, was not aware of that when I started this video. And then we have the help button. The big one here is um, you've got what's new. It tells you everything that's going on with each of the new uh, features. The quick line it talks about their interface improvements. Um, you know, a lot of different things. That, you know, we're going to be playing with a lot of them. Uh, restore purchases, not really important. Customer support and community, all those are really nice. Okay. All right, wanted to check the time to see how much. I didn't want this to run too long. We're going to do a second uh, menu tool up top, and then we'll do the next two menu tools next week. Our second one up here is a variety of adjustments. And you'll see probably one of my favorite is the Gaussian Blur. And the reason for that is I use that in just about everything that I do, uh, especially if I'm trying to create a little kind of shadowy things or trying to enhance something. I like Gaussian Blur. Motion Blur and Perspective Blur are 64-bit only. Uh, as you can see, not 64-bit. Sharpen, just like in Photoshop, it sharpens up things. Noise will create noise. Um, we can, you know, so if we're doing noise, there we go. So if you look at this picture, I've got 100% noise on it versus no noise. What's fun here is if you do, so we'll do 100% noise, and then we'll come in and do a Gaussian Blur. All of those noise pixels can be blurred. So you can see we're doing the Gaussian Blur there. Now the way I'm doing the increase and the decrease, when you're on whatever it is that you're doing, I'm gonna go back, use some back buttons here. Okay, so when we did the noise, you'll see up top, a no it says noise right there. And if you press and hold anywhere on the canvas and then start to move to the right, it increases it. And then so when you start to move to the left, it decreases it. So we'll go about right there. And then to finish, if you hit at the very bottom, the little eye, well, one step at a time. The little eye will show you what it looks like with, out, if you hold it down, and then if you let go, it shows you it again. So let me increase this fully. There we go. So when I press down on the little blue eye on the bottom, I'm holding my finger on it. You'll see that it disappears, and then when I raise, it comes back. The X clears it out, and then the redo. To finish it, say you're completely finished, and you like what it looks like, you hit the little magic wand that's currently lit, and now we're back here. We can then hit Gaussian Blur, do the same thing with our slide, hit the magic wand again, and we're done. And then if we wanted to, we could go in and sharpen. Sharpen works the same way. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so those are the adjustments. And again, I'm gonna undo. Quick note, the, one of the fastest ways to undo is two fingers and just tapping your screen. Undoes, boom, 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 love it. All right, let's look at hue, saturation, and brightness. You see this pops up in the middle. We can play with our saturation. We can play with our brightness. Or we can change it colors. We, oh no, I've gone green. I'm an alien. Okay, we're actually going to X out of that. Uh, I love this tool. You can do so much with it. Color balance allows you to go, let's say we want to go more red or more purple, or more blue too, okay? So again, just like Photoshop, you got curves. So let's add a couple of points on our curves. And you can play with your curves all you want. I'm gonna completely X out of this. Because I wanna get rid of the color that is, there we go. So now let's do the curves and Take my shadows down and my lights up. You can also mess with, now that's in the blue. 
if we wanted to do just all of them, we could do that. We could do the red. Let's do the red in reverse. Okay. And then again, you press the I, you can see the original. Boom, boom, boom. We'll X out of that. And then you can recolor. Pick a color on your screen. We'll pick that one right there. You can adjust your, the amount of recolor. Okay. So all the tools in the adjustments allows you to adjust your painting either while you're working on it or when you're finished. I generally use the adjustments once I feel like I'm fairly confident and finished with my image. Um, they, it's these little touch-ups that can enhance your image in the end. Okay. Oh, layer opacity. You can adjust the opacity of the layer. That's not how I adjust the opacity of the layer though. Um, usually I, I'm not messing with the opacity of the layer. Uh, but that is the way to do it. It's right there. Layer opacity. You can bring it down. So if you do a pencil sketch, for example, uh, and you want to bring your pencil sketch down, there's your layer opacity. Okay? All right, that's going to be it for this week. We will move on to these other two fabulous buttons here next week and maybe go a little farther. We'll see. Uh, I don't want these videos to run too terribly long because I know how people do get bored. I get bored myself sometimes. Uh, remember... Stop by the digitalpainter.com. If you're not part of the mail list, jump on the mail list. Uh, I'm going to be sending out some mails actually over the next couple of weeks uh, as I've got some fun things that I'm, I'm hoping to uh, uh, continue doing. I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful beginning of the summer, and I hope that you find some time during the summer to do a bunch of drawing. I mean, the weather, uh, I like going outside and doing sketching uh, during these days, although it's supposed to thunderstorm tonight and tomorrow, so probably not much outside then. All right, so I will see you guys next week. Take care and keep on drawing.